welcome back to my channel. My name is Malaysia Hayward and I am the Voodoo Bookkeeper. So I am doing an updated 2024 how to file your sales tax in Illinois via the My Tax Illinois website. Um, you can start by going to the Illinois Department of Revenue and then you can go down and click and it has like a little My Tax Illinois section that you can go ahead and head over. So we're going to jump right into it. I'm going to go, there was a, quite a few questions in the comments, so I'm going to make sure to answer as many questions as I can. And let's go ahead and dive right into it. So after you logged in and you went through the verification process, this is what your screen should look like. Um, I had some people ask me, what is my account number? Right here it says account. Underneath this is your account number. That is your account number for your My Tax Illinois. It's right here for you. Um, this is actually a business that I actually dissolved last year. Well, I didn't dissolve. I moved it to a corporation. So this name has changed. So I don't mind you guys seeing this information. None of this is relevant anymore. I've completely changed over my corporation and the address for it and everything like that. Um, but we're going to go ahead really quickly and go through what this screen has. So it will have your sales tax here. If you haven't signed up for it, you do have to go through that process of signing up. If you haven't created an account for it, then you do have to create an account for this. You can file your return right here. You manage your payments in return and you view more account options. Right here, it typically have your balance. Now, they determine um, how often you have to pay sales tax based on the revenue that comes into your business. So it may be monthly, it may be uh, quarterly, and it may be yearly. Um, so for this particular business, I believe I was doing it on an annual basis. So, um, yeah, so any other questions, make sure you guys drop that in the comments and let's get into it. So for the sales tax one, so for me, I have one business, so I have to do the ST1. Now, if you're somebody who has one business, but that business has multiple locations, then you need to fill out something called an ST2, which is for our multiple locations, right? So again, if you only have one business, one location, or you're an online business, and you're filling out the ST1. If you are somebody who has one business, but multiple locations, then you need to fill out the ST2. Now, remember that sales tax, sales tax is something that you should be collecting from your customers whenever you are, um, uh, whenever they are purchasing from you. Or sales tax should be something you're paying if you are purchasing something from a wholesaler or a manufacturer. That's something that you should be paying. So that's why it's so important to make sure you go in here and you file it correctly. So to begin, I'm going to click on file a return. We're going to click on that. And it's going to ask you to fill it out for a specific period. As you see, I've done it in the past. I'm going to fill out mine from last year. This is actually overdue. So that's why I got to get it done because I dissolved it towards the end of the year and to make it into a corporation. But I still need to fill out the sales tax for the portion that I was still active in this LLC. So as you can see, it tells me my due date up here. It has my account number again right here, the name of that uh, of my old company. Um, this starting, I was just telling you, if you remember, if you live in Illinois, that there was a time that the uh, sales tax was suspended on groceries and certain uh, products. That is now over with, but you still have to account for that if you used any of that. If that affected your business, you still have to account for that during this time. So mine's right now we're doing is an annual filing. So during that time that I was using my, and this doesn't particularly go to me because I, I don't sell groceries. I sell accounting products, um, accounting services, I should say. Um, but if this has anything to do with you, then you do have to account for this while you're doing your sales tax. So we're just going to click next. Scrolling down. So starting out, it asks you, it asks you, um, schedule A, do you need to complete a schedule A, right? So this is how you know what deductions. Now, if you've already tracked your deductions via your profit and loss, or you have a sales tax, most POSs, um, Square, things of that nature, they will give you a sales tax report. And if you've been tracking it via QuickBooks or an accounting software, you can pull out a sales tax report or look at your sales tax expense via your profit and loss statement. So you should already know your deductions. Um, but if you don't know your deductions, then Schedule A will help walk you through and create that amount that's, that accounts for your deductions. So we're going to hit yes for this. We want to make sure that we get every deduction correct according to their tax rates. Next, we have a E99 surcharge in the ITAC assessment. This, again, if you have, like, any type of prepaid services 
or you done any like dispatching for 911 services and this accounts for your business if it accounts for you if it doesn't then you're going to hit no most people aren't doing 911 services and most people aren't doing prepaid cell phone services so we're going to hit no and then again a prepaid sales tax statement of tax paid if you already prepaid your sales tax for the entire year then you need to fill out a pst2 if not then you're going to say no so you haven't paid up up front any money for sales tax so yes, no, no. Moving on. So this is taxes and miscellaneous deductions. So we're going to look at deductions, right? So what, how can we reduce that sales tax bill or, or that sales tax amount at the end? So we're going to write down the taxes collected on our general merchandise uh, from sales and services. So general merchandise, that's any type of products that you may have, both e-commerce and a physical store you need to write down those total taxes that you collect the total sales tax that you collected on our merchandise that you sold or all services that you provided same thing for number two only this time we're going to focus on reporting those taxes so pulling out that re that sales tax report from my pos system or from my accounting software and we're going to write down the taxes that we collected for food drugs and medical appliances sales or services Again, if you are a prepaid, uh, if you have a prepaid cell phone business where you're selling prepaid cell phone services, then number three applies. What taxes you, um, what taxes you collect? Resale. If you are a manufacturer and you resold products to um, any type of business, then you need in there and that business is using that to then sell to the general public. Then you need to put down the taxes that you collected. Um, and it's, it's really the same all the way down, but I'll keep going resale. I mean, sorry, interstate commerce. If let's say that we have a manufacturer that I'm buying supplies from outside the state. And if that, that manufacturer did not tax me, then I need to put in, or he did tax me then I need to go ahead and put that, um, in number five. So again, that's if I bought something from somebody outside of the state for use for my company to then resell to the public, what taxes were taken from me. So that could then be reduced. Um, everything else you want to think about selling, right? So if I did I sell any manufacturing uh, machinery and equipment, if I did sell it um, that I use for my business. So this isn't like you have a business that's selling manufacturing machinery or equipment. This is particularly, I have a um, sewing machine that I use for my business. I sold this, I sold it to another company. It's something that was once in use in my business and I sold it. And when I sold it, I should have sold it with sales tax. So if I did sell with sales tax, how much was that sales tax? Same thing for number seven. If I was using farming equipment for my business, I end up selling it. How much did I sell it with the sales tax? Same thing, graphic arts and machinery, same concept. For number nine, if you are a grocery store and any customers bought any anything from you using Snap, then you need to you need to put the taxes that they um paid you via using Snap. Um, enterprise, the sales, so think for everything else. Think if I sold this, then these are the taxes that I should have collected. So the sale of building materials. So if you sold, if you were, um, you had any extra building materials for a project that you work on and you sold it, then that applies in the same way all the way down. High impact business, same thing. River Edge redevelopment zone building materials. If you sold any um, building materials that fit under that River Edge redevelopment category, if you are a non for profit. And are you sold anything to a non-for-profit? There shouldn't be any sales tax uh, collected from them, but if there was, how much? Or if you are a um, non-for-profit and you sold something that has sales tax on it, how much was it? Uncollectible debt means if you are a manufacturing company, for example, and you deal with accounts receivable, so you are doing services in advance and people are paying you for it later, and but you're on, but they actually end up not paying you, but you you collected those taxes beforehand. How much of those taxes were uh, previously paid? So you need to put that down. Again, sales of services. If you're selling any services, um, any refunds that you may have, uh, those need to be put down. So if I had a cash refund and I paid taxes on that, so if the person paid taxes, but I had to refund them that money back, I have to write that down. Same thing. For no, so number seven, will auto-generate itself based on the answers that you've given from one through 16. It will populate here. Now, if you are someone who sells mo any type of fuel, then this applies to you. You will put down how much in the state motor fuel taxes 
that was paid. So again, they populate that number right here. Again, this is for anybody who sells motor oil or fuel for cars, trucks, things of that nature. If it does not apply to you, don't put anything down. You're going to skip all the way down to section three, which if you see these dots, they auto generate, they auto populate that calculation for you. So all it's doing right here is adding lines 17 and 29. So again, that will auto populate for you going over to the next section. So if you're a bar, a tavern, a restaurant that sells alcoholic liquor, any of that, you have to put down the total amount of liquor that you purchase. So um, if you're, it, it's really kind of straightforward. If you purchase liquor, you invoice and it will deliver to you how much sales tax did you pay on that. If this, if you don't sell any alcoholic liquor, then this does not apply to you. So taxable receipts, we're going to start out with our total receipts. So what we're going to do here is we're going to put down the total amount from sales that we collected, including any service charges. So not just the sales tax, we're going to put the whole amount. So if I'm selling a bowl, if I'm selling a bottle of water and I charge a dollar and then taxes were five cents, then I'm putting that whole dollar five cents down. So the total amount of sales total amount of sales or services that you have, including taxes to be put here. And then this will auto generate from when we did our schedule A. So when we put down all the deductions and then for number three, we'll auto generate, it will take this, it will subtract this, and then it will give you your taxable amount of receipts. Scrolling down, we're going to talk about um, taxes on receipts. So these are sales from locations within Illinois. So if I have a storefront or if I have any type of business inside of Illinois, then again, we're going to put down the total amount of sales here for general merchandise or food, drugs, and medical applications. It will auto-generate that tax rate here and give you the number here. So this is sales from location outside of Illinois. So I'm still a business entity or I'm less like this is very common for e-commerce. If you're an e-commerce person, for example, and you are selling outside of Illinois to different places like California, Texas, wherever it may be, you need to put down that total amount of sales here. It will auto-generate your tax rate here and this and the other. Another thing that's very important to know if you are e-commerce or any type of store that is located in Illinois, but you are selling to different uh, states, that you may have a sales tax in that state, that you might have a sales tax obligation. So you might be having to do this, not just for Illinois, but for whatever state that you're selling in. How do you know? It's going to be based on what the threshold is for that particular state and what your presence is. I know for most states, if you sell over $25,000 in sales, that you need to be doing sales tax there. I also know if you have a business in Illinois and you also have another location in California, that that puts you, then you have a presence in which you then have to pay sales tax. So that's a whole different video. I believe I have a video on my channel. Go look that up if you're an e-commerce store. And then sales at prior rates. So if you were, uh, you had any other products and you changed the pricing on them, then you will put that here. Moving on. We're, we're getting close to the end. So retailer discounts and net tax on receipts. So I'm going to read exactly what this part is. If you are required to, required to file a form ST1, which you're filling out electronically, so you're required to fill this out via electric, electronic, I can't even talk, electronically, and have not been approved for a waiver for that electronic filing mandate, you are entitled to a discount only if electronically file your return on or before the due date and you also make the payment on time. If you are not required to file a form ST1 electronically, or if you are required to file a form ST1 electronically, but have been approved for a waiver of that electronic filing mandate, you are entitled to a discount if you mail or electronically file your return and payment on or before the due date. If you are entitled to a discount, the discount amount is 1.75% of the tax due or $5 per calendar year, whichever is greater. So again, what that sums it up to say, if you are, if you have been required to file this form via what we're doing now electronically, then you do, um, and you're, you have not been approved for a waiver, then you qualify for a discount. If you're were, if you're kind of figure out does this apply to me, then I would definitely call the Illinois Department of Revenue, seeing whether this discount applies to you, and I will move forward from there. 
Now, this right here will auto-generate for you as well. It's the next tax due. So, it's what we did um, in the previous screen, this taxable receipts. That line, the finish, the bottom line will now. So, again, I will call the Department of Illinois Revenue to see whether that applies to you. And then this will auto-generate. And then you subtract 10 from 9 um, to be able to get this. But, again, anything with the dots will auto-generate for you, auto-calculate for you. Scrolling down, taxes on purchases. So now this has everything to do with what you might have bought. So if you were taxed on any type of merchandise that you bought to then resell to the general public, you will fill out number 12 again for number 13. If you purchase something at different rates, uh, you got any discounts, anything like that, then you will put that in number 14. And then it will auto calculate the taxes due on purchases. So if you um, are a reseller and let's say, for example, you 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 bought something from a manufacturer that you plan to sell back to the general public, but you decide to keep it for yourself, you are required to then pay taxes on that. Or you bought something and you decide to use it for a different purpose other than what you bought it for, then you are required to then buy pay taxes on it if that purchase was not used for what it for business purposes or what you had attended it initially to be used. You owe taxes on that. Moving on, our net tax due. Again, everything with the dollar line will auto-populate for you. 16A, a manufacturer purchaser credit. If you are a manufacturer, then you know whether you have this credit or not. If you are not a manufacturer, then this has nothing to do with you. Uh, Prepaid sales tax, we filled that out in our Schedule A. That, I mean, sorry, not very first. Um, our very first page where they ask us, did we prepay our sales tax? Um, again, uh, a quarterly monthly accelerated payment. If that, uh, if that some, some businesses are required to, to pay, um, a certain amount every quarter and it's accelerated. So whether that has something to do with you, you would absolutely know because you receive a letter from the Illinois Department of Revenue. Number 19 and 20 again will auto populate for you to then give you that ending number. So now we're gonna th we're gonna get into what is due. Right, we got so everything that is dotted has been auto generated for you. Number two, excess tax surcharge and assessment collected. Again, if you have nothing to do with, have nothing to do with prepaid services or anything like that, that should be zero. And then it's gonna give you a total tax and surcharge and all that due. Um, a credit amount. So let's say you overpay anything for a sales tax. You file something, you have a discount somewhere, you have a credit, and now we'll go here. And then number 25, and if you have a credit, again, the Illinois Department of Revenue will send you a letter letting you know, hey, you overpay in sales tax. Here's a credit that you can now apply to lower your sales tax bill. And then 25 will go ahead after it generates and, and subtracts uh, everything from what it needs to be. Then number line 25 will tell you how much you owe on your sales tax. So this right here will tell you how much you need to pay via your sales tax. So once we finish everything, and right now, like I said, mine is zero for this time period because I didn't use this LLC. I switched it over to a corporation in, throughout the middle of the year. So um, none of this applies to me. I'm going to hit submit. You're going to put your password in. I'll pause it just a second so I put my password in. And then we are finished. You get this confirmation request if you did it right. Now, if anything that you did wrong, it will not let you proceed to the next window. So if you do anything incorrect, it will not let you proceed to that next window. So make sure that those numbers are accurate and you are getting them. That's why it's so important to do that bookkeeping part of your business or have somebody doing that bookkeeping part or that sales tax part of your business. So again, you have everything you need. You can print it off. You can, if you want, if you're ready to pay, you'll proceed to payment, and then it gives you two options. You can pay by your bank account, or you can pay by a mail-in uh, voucher. So, yes. So that is the end of this video. If you guys have any additional questions, please make sure you drop them again in the question. I mean, excuse me, drop them again in the comments. I believe I hit all the questions that were inside of my uh, comment section. So let me know if you like this updated version. If I need to go back and include anything else, hey, if I got something wrong, let me know. So make sure you like, comment, and subscribe to my channel. I'll see you guys in the next video.